Okay, let's take a look at the angle bungee problem. So the idea is we are going to release the cart with Einstein on it from rest, and the spring is just about to stretch. And so as soon as he's released, the spring will start to stretch, and he will go down the ramp here. And we want to predict the maximum distance the cart will travel. Um, and so we're trying to predict some distance there. We don't know what it is. I just drew a part approximately what it is there. And so what do we need to know if we're going to solve this? Well, we need to know the, the mass of Einstein in the cart, and that's 0.55 kilograms. We also need to know the angle. And if you look here, I've got a 30 centimeter height, and this length is about 122 centimeters. And so if you do an inverse sine of 30 over 122, you get 14. And then the spring constant is about 3 newtons per meter. And now we draw a diagram and show theta there and our values. And we're going to apply conservation of energy. In other words, we're going to neglect friction and air resistance, which is an OK assumption for the first time down the ramp. And so this is an important equation. It's the main one from the unit. You write that out, and it helps you think about what it is you're trying to do. And so what is the initial energy? It's all potential, gravitational potential. I don't um, have any kinetic. I'm releasing it from rest. The spring is not stretched. There's no elastic, and so there's only gravitational potential. You just go through that checklist each time, and you can do even the hardest problems. And then down at the bottom, I know the spring is stretched now, so I have elastic energy. We're solving for when he stops. That's when he reaches his maximum distance, so there's no kinetic. And if I say the height is zero at the bottom, there's no gravitational potential either. And so MGH is one-half kx squared. MGH is the work done to lift him there to start with. One-half kx squared is the work to stretch the spring. And when you have a conservative force like gravity or an elastic force, that work is preserved, is saved, is the potential to do work, potential energy. And the 1 half kx squared, that is the average force, kx over 2, times x again squared. Or it's the area under a f equals kx graph. which is this triangle, right? And so the height would be kx, and the base would be x, area of this triangle, 1 half kx squared. Should know all that. And now I have two unknowns, the height and x. But if you have a sketch of the situation, it's easy to see that h is related to x and theta. And so since h is the opposite side, h would be x times sine theta. So I'm going to substitute that into here, and this is the same equation then, but instead of h, we have x sine theta. And x cancels. That means x equals 0 is a solution. We're solving for when is the velocity 0, and that makes sense. The velocity was 0 here, but we don't want that. We want the next time it's 0. So I solve for the other x, and I get 2mg sine theta over k, and that is 0.87 meters. We can test this out. And so this is a video. I'm going to pause it when it gets to the bottom. And then you can see where it ended up. Looks like it's a little past 90. There's a zoom in. This time it turned out to be 92. I think the spring's a little uh, looser than 3 newtons per meter. It's 2.8, 2.9. We can make that our unknown. Go back and solve that if you wanted to. But in this case, we predicted x, and the actual is 0.92. So if you like, you can get the percent error, 6%. It's not too bad. If I measured the spring constant more carefully, this particular spring, I think that would reduce it. Let's look at a tougher problem. Now I want to know what is the maximum velocity of the cart. And so for this, we need to know the same things we had before, and also... We need to know something else. The velocity is changing as he goes down, and so we need to know where is it maximum. So some unknown distance. You may have a 
good idea where that is, that's okay, but don't just assume that. You should be able to prove it. And so let's think about this a little bit. And so what's larger right when I release him? The force of gravity in the x direction or the x component of gravity or the spring force? And we know it's gravity because the spring force is zero at the beginning and after he moves a little bit, it's real tiny. But mg sine theta is the component of gravity in the x direction along the ramp and that's bigger. And so how about at the end? Spring force. Spring is now stretched. It's slowing him down. So that kind of gives this away. So at the beginning, we know the velocity is increasing. And at the end, when the spring force is greater, the velocity is decreasing. And so if it's going up at the beginning and going down later on, there's got to be a point in between where it's the most, the point where it transitioned from speeding up to slowing down. And so we know that we could say the forces are equal at that point, equal and opposite. They add up to zero. And so that's the key idea for coming up with a way to solve for x. It's where the two forces are balanced. And what could we say about the acceleration at this point? So maximum velocity, a lot of people think, oh, that's got to be a big acceleration then because it's going fast. Acceleration means going fast. No. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. And so if I'm at my max velocity, the acceleration is zero. If I still had acceleration, I'd still be speeding up. And so I wouldn't be at the max yet. If I had negative acceleration, I'd be slowing down in this case. And so I would have missed the maximum, so it's at zero. And so we just need to find x when the forces in the direction of the ramp add up to zero. So free body diagram, the component of the weight parallel to the track is opposite theta. We've already been saying it's mg sine theta. You should know that by now. And the spring force is parallel to the track, at least in this problem. And it's equal to kx. And so some of the forces in the x direction parallel to the ramp is zero. mg sine theta minus spring force is zero. You could just put kx already here if you want. So we get that, and we get that. Notice this is half the distance we found previously. Does so that make sense? It's in the middle. Now that's only true if this force is linear. And so you have to be careful. It's also only true uh, for the case where the spring uh, starts stretching right away. Uh, in our bungee jump lab, remember Einstein fell for a while first, then it wouldn't be in the middle. So don't just say, oh, I know the answer now, it's in the middle. That's not true. You do know the answer if you remember it's where the acceleration is zero or where the sum of the forces are zero. That's what you want to know. And so we put in our numbers, we find out it's 0.43 meters, and uh, that is where the maximum velocity occurs. Now we want to use energy to find out what is the velocity at that point. So conservation of energy again, we're going to neglect air resistance and friction. And so it's a little different now than our previous term, our previous conservation of energy solution. Now we have kinetic energy. And I'm going to say the height is zero here, so I don't have gravitational potential. You could measure it from the bottom like we did before then you'd have gravitational potential here, but that would be offset by the extra gravitational potential that you'd have here. So give that a try if you want to see, but I'm going to set that's equal to zero. And now I have mgh equals one half kx squared plus one half mv squared. H is x sine theta again. X is different though, now it's 0.43. So it's the opposite, we already figured that out. Just, if you draw this triangle out, it's obvious. And so all I did was put in x sine theta for h here, put in my numbers. You could solve this algebraically for v. I'm not sure that's worth the trouble. And careful. And you get 1.02. And so is that correct? Let's give it a try. 
And so here is a video of a motion sensor that's displaying the cart going down. And so you can see it oscillates. The velocity goes between a maximum positive and a maximum negative and slowly loses energy as it goes. But in this first half cycle here, not much energy is lost. And so we can read this first velocity and it comes out to 1.03. And so that's pretty close. And so that worked maybe a little better than the first prediction. So watch my other video, the Bungie example two for a very similar problem to the maximum velocity part of this for Einstein falling vertically.